What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malt Activist, and today is day one of six, where we taste six Isla Festival 2021 or Fish Isle releases uh, on six consecutive days. So, for our first day, one of six, we have this amazing Bruch Laddie. That's right, the Laddie Origins. Part of the Face Oil 2021 release. Yes, hello! And aren't you excited for this Bruch Laddie? The Laddie Origins. So am I. Super excited. Uh, but before we start, let me tell you and remind you of our subscriber giveaway. That's right, four bottles of the Aaron Quartercask. The second we hit 2,000 subscribers, four, that's right, one, two, three, four, four lucky winners will get a bottle of the Aaron Quartercask delivered to their doorstep as a thank you from me. Not only that, we get rid of the stash. The stash is gone. The stash is gone at 2,000 subscribers. I'm getting kind of fed up of the stash. So let's hurry this up, please. Thank you very much. And yes, if you're wondering what this new look is about, let me tell you something. I love golf. I love Tiger Woods. Does this hat belong to me? No. Does it belong to my 12-year-old daughter who wears it to hip-hop class? Yes. Am I having an exceptionally bad hair day? Also, yes. So, this is it. We're sporting the new look today. That's right. Sophistication. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm getting at. Okay, now we have everything out of the way. Let's focus on the whiskey on hand. We have the lovely Bruch Laddie, Laddie Origins, uh, released for the Fish Isle 2021, which is the Isla Festival, which for those of you who don't know, is the annual whiskey festival that takes place on uh, the island of Isla, which is just west of Scotland. I go there every year for the whiskey festival, and one of my favorite days, absolutely favorite open days, is the Bruchlade open day. And it is so much fun. There's so much dancing, there's so much drinking, there's so much eating. It is just Oh, it's just one of the days you have to be. If you want to experience a good whiskey festival, then Brook Laddick is the one that really puts on a great show. So that's my that's my uh, little word of advice to you if you're ever visiting Isla for the whiskey festival. Number two, they also produce good whiskeys from time to time. You know what I'm saying? After Mr. Jim McEwen uh, left, there I thought there would be like a huge hole and massive shoes to fill, which of course they are. Uh, but I think the new master distiller, Adam Hannett, has done a very, very decent job. Uh, and I think uh, the testament to that is the Port Charlotte PC-10, which came out a year or a couple of years ago, which is an absolute cracker of a dram. I reviewed it. It's kind of, it, I think it was kind of like my whiskey of the year last year, if I'm not mistaken, or the year before, whatever. So this year the pressure must have been on. What do you what do you produce uh, for uh, 2021? Uh, and so as it happens, this is a bit of a commemorative bottle. Yeah, it's a bit of a commemorative bottle because it has a lot of different types of whiskeys in it. Now here's what happened. <laughs> In 2001, when, oh yeah, 2000 or 2001, the, uh, the, the distillery was reopened and uh, to mark 20 years of its new existence, Adam Hannett said, hey guys, what, what have we done in the last 20 years? So they said this, which was a truckload. And so he said, okay, let's put it in a bottle. And everyone went, what, what do you mean? They said, yeah, he said, yeah, let's just put everything in the bottle. And like, dude, we have no idea what you're talking about. So, this whiskey, if you don't know, or inside this bottle, are 13 different types of whiskeys, each one commemorating some sort of milestone achieved by Brook Laddick. There's 12 different vintages in here. We have no idea what the vintages are because SWA. 
And finally, there's nine different types of casks that are in play inside this bottle. Now, if you like, I could read out in great detail every single type of whiskey that has gone into this bottle to make it uh, what it is. But I promise you, you are going to get super, super bored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place them right here. There you go. Can you read that? I don't even know if you can read that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. There's 13 different types of whiskeys in there. There's a few that are interesting. There's a few that are interesting. Let me read them out. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, we have we have some triple distilled um, from a first fill bourbon barrel that's made from uh, Scottish barley. We have, um, what else? We have uh, Yatesbury Farm biodynamically grown barley from a first fill bourbon barrel. Damn. Then we have, um, then we have um, something from Sh Oh, we have Scottish organic barley uh, finished in a second filled Shining Blanc hogshead, which is okay. And uh, and I'll, I'll read out one more. Um, da, 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 da. Ooh, and Black Isle grown regional trials barley from a first fill bourbon barrel. So this is all kind of, I mean, these are all these different barleys that Brooke Ladig has experimented with. Uh, um, it's a bit Greek and Latin to me, to be honest. Um, I don't know what each single barley does. Uh, uh, the guys over the distillery probably, uh, obviously not probably, uh, they know uh, better than I do. All I know is that this particular bottle has 13 different uh, whiskeys in it. It has 12 different vintages and I believe nine different cask types. The majority of the casks, by the way, are first fill bourbon barrels and I will get to, and, and I will circle around to that uh, in a bit. So what's left to do? Chin chin. There you go. Natural color, non-chill filtered, the way whiskey should be bottled. Should it have had it age? Well, this one, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to let this one slide because of everything that's going into this. It would be impossible to put a vintage on this um, or an age on this. So this is probably one of the few exceptions I can make for a NAS whiskey uh, because of its makeup, you know, ultimately. So, but the real proof, as they say, is in the whiskey. It has a very pleasant nose. This is bottled at 56.3% ABV cask strength. It has a very pleasant nose, lots of honey, very, very sweet, lots of honey. There's a barley, oat, porridge whiff in there as well. Brown sugar, quite fruity as well. I get peaches and kiwi. Some apricots, a hint of salted caramel and milk chocolate. So overall, oh, vanilla. Yes. So overall, I think a very decent nose, uh, it's completely unpeated as are all Bruchladis. Uh, and uh, I think quite a balanced nose, uh, if maybe not uh, too much on the sweeter side, but still uh, kind of holds uh, well on its own. Quite uh, quite a strong whiff and you know, that 56.3%, yes, 56.3% <clears throat> really driving those flavors. So ultimately, I like the nose. Um, I wish I could tell you that I can smell all the different casks in here, but I can't. Uh, I'm getting a very dominant sort of first fill bourbon nose uh, on this. And it's not surprising given that, you know, uh, the majority of the casks in play are first fill bourbons. I like the nose. I guess there's nothing left for me to do, but dance. Hmm. Hmm. Ow. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
There's a touch of bitterness in there somewhere, which I am not a huge fan of. It's a good mouthfeel though. Let me see, uh, I have uh, gentle spices. Uh, I have black pepper and cloves. Uh, the honey is back. There's some beeswax in here in, as well. Gets fruity, some pineapple, hint of licorice, and a slight medicinal touch as well. However, I don't like it as much as the as the nose. I really don't like this too much on my palate. I feel I feel that the vintages or, or the age age of uh, of these whiskies is fairly low. I'm gonna put it between five, seven, nine years old. And I think a majority of them are the younger spirits. And I, it kind of comes through in the delivery ultimately. And it's, you know, it's that uh, hint of, uh, how should I say this? Hint of faints, uh, some spirit that comes through uh, on, this, um, on this palette, which I don't know. It doesn't work uh, as it should uh, on the nose. So this is not my first time drinking this whiskey. I've had this. Uh, uh, I've had it a few times uh, before uh, and I've always arrived at the same conclusion where the palate does not match up to the nose uh, but you know what having said that there's yeah that palate doesn't hold up to the nose but having said that there's another way of looking at at this whiskey as well and the, the fact is that it's ultimately it's a commemorative whiskey right it's a commemorative whiskey and what it's doing is it's taking every single milestone that Bruch Gladig has achieved over the last 20 years and put it together as an homage to the existence of the distillery, which I respect and, and I appreciate wholeheartedly. Uh, but if if ultimately, but you know, ultimately you don't buy whiskeys uh, for their for their provenance. I mean, you do sometimes, but really, if you want to drink a whiskey, you buy it for its taste. And I don't think the taste it really holds up to the prov provenance, in my opinion. And uh, frankly, this bit of, you know, uh, flavor profile or this flavor profile that I find on the palate could have easily been achieved uh, by, uh, by uh, you know, some good first fill bourbon barrels and maybe uh, throw in another wine cask in there somewhere. Maybe even some sort of French oak. I don't know. So it leaves me... It leaves me a little disappointed on the palate. Um, one of my one of my colleagues in the whiskey club mentioned, "Man, I was expecting so much. You know, there's 13 different types of whiskeys in this. I was expecting like this explosion of flavors and and this and this uh, roller coaster ride through all these different flavor profiles. But what I get ultimately is something that could have e easily been achieved by a first fill bourbon. And I have to agree with that." Uh, and you know, so when you set up expectations so high, and this is this is an expensive bottle, and you had to you had to get into a ballot to get this. You know, this is not just hey, you want to buy this whiskey? Go ahead. No, this was this whiskey was a serious whiskey. My whiskey club had to put in put in our names uh, and and uh, be be allowed to buy one, which you know I find very weird. But it is what it is. So yeah, man, there you have it. There you have it. Uh, uh, our first whiskey of uh, six uh, is the Brew Gladdy Gladi Origins, um, uh, released for the festival, Isla Festival 2021. Uh, I'm glad I got to taste this. There's a story behind this, which I appreciate. There's a provenance that I can, I can respect. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the proof is in the pudding and the pudding doesn't hold up. I wish the pudding was better, but it's not undrinkable. It's fairly decent. Um, but also again, the fact that this is an expensive whiskey to get your hands on. Uh, so, you know, buyer beware. That's all I can say. Uh, but uh, if, uh, you know, if, if you collect whiskeys and uh, and uh, and Brookladic is your favorite distillery, then sure, sure buy this. Uh, this not a lot wrong with it, uh, but I just wish it it blew me out of the water, but it didn't. And so ultimately, I am going to give this whiskey a, a C.
Yeah, I was thinking of giving it a C minus, but I'll give it a C because I like I like the people over at Brooklyn and I enjoy enjoy visiting them during the festival. So for that, I wouldn't give it a C minus. I'll give it a C. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a that's a fair grade. So good good nose eh palate, um, but you know, ah, I wish it was better, but it's not. But that's okay. That's okay. We've crossed the first milestone, and that's our first whiskey out of six in our series of festival tastings. So thank you, thank you for being here with me. Uh, I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time, peace.